Avi, when I think about the anthropic principle, I oscillate between the two extremes. On the one hand, it sounds utterly trivial with, with just a, a tautology. It's obvious we can only see things because we're here to see them. And on the other, the, other, the other extreme, it's one of the most insightful probes to lead us to a deeper understanding of reality. It's never in between. It's either one of those two extremes. It all depends on whether there is this notion of the multiverse, where things are realized in many different ways, uh, as to whether um, in our region of the universe, things were arranged to fit our existence. Uh, and that will determine, this notion will set the stage for whether the anthropic argument has relevance for explaining anything about our universe or not. Uh, we don't know at the moment. Uh, it's still work in progress. Uh, we tend to believe that we are the centers of, of, of the scene, but uh, this may be an illusion. Uh, it depends on how common is life under different circumstances in the universe, what kind of other forms of life might be out there. Uh, we may believe that we are, uh, that things were arranged based on the anthropic argument just because of our ignorance of other possibilities for life elsewhere right now. So instead of the anthropic, it may be life-centric uh, in many different ways that we currently do not realize. Uh, and so our notion of the anthropic argument may be misguided at the moment. So, if you start with the multiverse, I understand that position, but the, the history of the explanatory process, even though multiverse comes out of the physics of inflation and, and many worlds of quantum theory, however you want to get a multiverse, you can get it. Uh, but from an explanatory point of view, it starts out differently. It starts out with a recognition that there is fine-tuning in our one universe, and then that cries out for explanation. It just seems so absurd to have such fine-tuning. So there are only three possibilities. One, it can be an absolute brute fact. It is what it is. Take it or like it. T take it or leave it. Lump it or like it. And there's no explanation. That's very unsatisfying. There's a theological explanation, which some people find very satisfying. Other people <laughs> find completely un unsatisfying. And that led to a multiverse in terms of an explanatory process. Um, so, you know, looked at it from that perspective, uh, how do you analyze it? Well, the way I view uh, our existence is that we are probably just an afterthought. We happen to exist right now. Uh, we will not exist t more than 10 trillion years from now in, in the future. Uh, there was no possibility for life uh, earlier than uh, 30 million years after the Big Bang, when the first uh, stars formed. Um, and so, uh, for some period of time, life is a phenomenon that takes place on rocky planets around the stars, but there is no special significance. I would think that uh, the actors in this play are not particularly important. Uh, the chemistry of life is just a byproduct of circumstances that were generated in our observable volume of the universe. It's possible that there are other volumes where the circumstances are different and nothing that resembles life as we know it takes place there. So in a way you might argue that we can explain our existence based on uh, some principles or uh, based on the fact that life exists in some regions and not in others. But I don't find that a particularly important question. What I think is the most interesting is to understand how this huge history of the universe, with all of its complexity, evolved and what are the underlying principles that controlled its evolution and just appreciating that beauty by itself is looking as if you're looking at a beautiful work of art. You can appreciate the complexity of it without assigning significance for the paint that was used to make this picture. That makes sense in itself, but it doesn't it ignore the, this, this, the very fine-tuning of, of, of so many things that if, if it were slightly different, uh, we would not be able to, to be here or galaxies couldn't of form. Course. 
So if you look at the painting, obviously the brush strokes affected the way the painting looks. And without the painter uh, taking a particular brush stroke, the, the painting would look differently. And in order to explain the specific details of the painting, you have to assign a very fine-tuned uh, motions uh, to the hand of the painter as it made this painting. But I don't think that's important. What's, what is important is the beauty of the painting. And that has nothing to do with the details of how the physical ingredients came into place. It has to do with uh, the complexity, the richness, uh, and the aesthetic pleasure that you get from looking at it. And that does not need uh, human beings, it does not need life, it, 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 it just what it is? It's just enjoyable to look at it yeah. and study it, and yeah. that's what I do as an astronomer. Yeah. And uh, worrying about how the, bra the brush strokes were fine-tuned, to me, is not as enjoyable. Yeah.